Welcome to session three of this course, Spring Web Floods. In this session, we're gonna cover the overall architecture of our application. We are gonna learn the basics of the React library reactor. We are gonna cover the most popular functional operators like flap, map, map, and filter. And we're gonna be building a CRUD application using the Web Floods and we're going to be building a CRUD application representing a human resources backend using Spring Web Floods. Planning our API architecture. In this video, we are going to see how our server change when we introduce Web Floods. We're going to cover a high level perspective of our application architecture and we're going to go over a quick intro of what reactor. Okay, our server architecture is going to change when we use Web Floods. The column on the left represents was our app on previous videos. We were using Print MVC, the servlet API, and a servlet container like Tomcat. This is fine, but the problem is that it's blocking. Current cloud applications need to be able to handle high loads coming from clients. By using blocking APIs, this is very hard. The problem is that for every connection, we are going to use a thread and thread are resources exhausted. This means that they consume a lot of resources, a lot of RAM from our app, make them not scalable when we need a lot of them. Now, by using reactive APIs with web floods, we are not going to block. This means that when we have to contact external third party service or communicating with our data source DB, the thread in charge of communicating is waiting for the response. It's not going to be idle. It can be used for another task and then come back when the response comes from the external source. This allows us to use better our resources and make our app more scalable. This is represented by the column at the right. Print with reactive, reactive HTTP as the client. And we need to use a, a web container that allows to use reactive APIs, like for example, Netty, that is the default on Spring Boot 2.0, and the one we're going to use in this course. This diagram shows a high level perspective of the architecture of our application. We have a front end session representing the clients that are going to consume our REST API. We have the back end session, the app that we're going to build. We have covered ready controllers and services are going to have a new entity called repositories that are going to be our component to communicate with data sources. In this case, our employee DB. And on the right, we have our DB session. Here we can see the model, our domain model employee that we're going to be using through this session of the course. OK, the reactor. So what is reactor? Reactor is a reactive library use it mainly to work asynchronously with data. Why we use it? On the JVM currently, there are two approaches when you want to work with async APIs. You can use callbacks or features. The problem with these two approaches is that they are not hard to compose, especially callbacks that create the problem called callback hell when you have a callback, nesting inside a callback, nesting inside a callback, that makes the code hard to read and easy to introduce bugs. By using Reactor, we avoid this because we are gonna be able to use functional operators like when we work with Java Streams API from Java 8, make it very easy to work with sequence of data. So how the data flows in Reactor, okay? In Reactor or Iris Java or ACA Streams or any other Reactive library, you can think of the data flowing as an assembly line. Like for example, a car assembly line where you have different stage. This stage can be represented as your operators and you have pieces or a car structure going through these stages. In each stage, a modification is done to this car structure. The same thing is in Reactor. You have a sequence of data 
and the data goes through operators changing its value. Reactor types. Okay, in reactor, we have two types. We have floods and mono. Floods is used to represent a stream of data of zero to n items. And mono is used to represent zero or one item. So for more information about the reactor library, I highly recommend you to go to projectreactor.io. Okay, this slide is just to add a little bit more of what I meant with the assembly line example. In reactor, as you can see, we have a sequence of data that is the upper sequence that we can see one, two, three, four, five, six, and a termination. And we have what I call a stage in this example, an operator that is in charge to modify data. In this example, there is not any modification whatsoever, but there could be, we could be filtering by some threshold, some items. We could be transforming the items to another shape, infinite other things that we could do.